So then guys, we've got the brand new iPhone 15 model which just been announced at the Apple Wanderlust event. However, lots of you are wondering how many more improvements and upgrades do we have on this new model over say the iPhone 14 from last year. So what I've decided to do for you guys today is I'm going to do a review comparison. So what I'm going to do, we're going to do the iPhone 15 versus the iPhone 14 review of specs. And without further ado guys, let's begin. So then, as you can see right here, we have the iPhone 15 on the left and the iPhone 14 on the right. So let's begin then with this comparison review. So first of all, let's talk about the actual iPhone dimensions. So really, there's not much in it as you can actually see here. So actually, the sort of main difference is just the height of the iPhone 15 is one millimeter smaller or even slightly less than that. But really, everything else is the same. The width is 0.1 of a millimeter smaller. So you're not even going to see that difference. And the actual depth, so the actual thickness of the actual iPhone 15 is exactly the same as the iPhone 14. So really it is quite similar you're not going to notice if you put these two phones together you're really not going to see any difference there but then moving on to the actual weight of these iPhones funny enough there's nothing really here either there's one gram in it the iPhone 15 weighs one gram less than the actual iPhone 14 just to put this into perspective for you if you were to get a tempered glass onto your iPhone 15 one of those screen protectors normally they weigh around about about nine grams just on their own so that's really shows you the difference you're not gonna get anything in. there's no difference in what you're gonna feel in your hand but moving on though the actual display types they're both exactly the same here they both have the OLED display however the difference is obviously with the iPhone 15 this year we do actually have dynamic island added this was a feature that was on exclusive to the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max last year and now it's here on the iPhone 15 so it's really good to have that so you can use all the features from that this year the actual screen size though they're exactly the same they're 6.1 inches this has been the sort of standard size we've had for the iphone 15 or the iphones are basically of the sort of set model for many years now it's always been at 6.1 inches i think it's ever since the iphone 10r that we've had that but then moving over to the screen resolution it's 16 by 9 and then the actual resolution funny enough is actually slightly different on the iphone 15 because it's a new sort of display technology so it comes up slightly more by a couple more pixels but funny enough though moving over to the pixels per inch it actually is still 460 pixels per inch according to apple for both of these iphones so yeah even though there is a slight difference there in the actual screen resolution the pixels per inch is staying exactly the same moving over to the display refresh rate we then don't see any differences this year it's still only a 60 hertz refresh rate there is no motion nothing going up to 120 hertz but a lot of people have actually said that this is definitely the best 60 hertz display they've ever seen in a phone and to be honest a lot of people even say that even phones would say a 90 hertz when android are very similar to the way how they display on the 60 hertz on an iphone so you are still getting one of the best 60 hertz source of refresh rates in the screen definitely on the iphone 15 and the iphone 14. The display protection is still the same. It's ceramic shield. What well, Apple have adapted since the iPhone 12. So it's good to still see this inside it. And it's a very, very strong type of glass. Then we've actually got the processor, the CPU. And the difference is this that last year is that we've got the A16. That was last year and it's now been put into the iPhone 15. And basically these chips are very similar in their architecture. The main difference is the A16 is sort of built on a 5.4 nanometer die. But both of these chips have a 5 core GPU inside them. And also they have a 6 core CPU. And that's made up of 4 efficiency cores and also 2 performance cores. And then also so there is of course that 16 core neural engine as well and the iphone 15's neural engine is definitely far better than what we got in the a15 chipset so there's definitely an increase there then for the actual ram amounts they're exactly the same amount except for the iphone 15 does use the newer lpddr5 ram compared to the lpddr4x ram that we got with the iphone 14 so we do actually have that newer type of ram inside it this year 
Then after that, we've actually got the storage amounts. So the storage amounts, as you can see here, they're basically exactly the same for the last couple of years. Now, they're 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, and 512 gigabytes. There's no option of a one terabyte on the standard kind of iPhone 15 and iPhone 14. And just like anything with Apple, there is also no expansion or storage, unfortunately. Moving over to the actual battery sizes though, the iPhone 15 has definitely got a bigger battery inside it. It's actually a 3,877 milliamp compared to the 3,279 milliamp that we've actually got in the iPhone 14. So there is actually a difference there. But according to Apple with their battery playback, as you can see right here, they're saying there's actually no differences whatsoever. But I think what we actually have to do is we'll have to get some YouTubers to actually do some battery drain tests to actually see the actual difference here. I believe the iPhone 15 is probably going to have a better battery. It's got a newer screen. It has got the A16 chipset and that battery you just saw is bigger. So I personally think it will last longer than the iPhone 14. Maybe it won't last hours longer, but it will definitely probably have an improvement in my opinion. Then we've actually got another big change here, and that is it's to do with the actual charging. So the iPhone 15 can actually use now USB-C at the bottom, whereas you've still got the old lightning port on the iPhone 14. That's a 20 watt charging inside both of these. The only other difference is that obviously with the iPhone 15, you can now also charge up your AirPods too, which is really, really cool with a wire connection. But we do have wireless MagSafe on the back of both of these iPhones as well, and they're up to 15 watts, but it's also been the same ever since the iPhone 12. Then after that, we've got the water resistance. They're both exactly the same here. They're both IP68, six meters up to 30 meters or 30 minutes more like. Uh, so basically, if you drop it into a swimming pool, and as long as you rescue it within half an hour, you'll be absolutely fine there. So that's a good resistance that we have. Then after that, we've actually got the ports. And like I said, we do have the USB-C port now compared to the Lightning port. And finally, Apple have made that move, which is really good to hear. And then we've also got the headphone ports as well. There's none on here because everything now works by Bluetooth. But then we've also got an updated chip now inside the iPhone 15, the ultra band sort of chip. So this is a chip that basically allows you to find other devices and also to even find your iPhone. We now actually have a U2 chip, which supposedly is three times more powerful than what we've got in the U1 chip, what's in the standard iPhone 14. Then for Bluetooth technology, it's exactly the same here we've had now. So it's Bluetooth 5.3 in both of these iPhones, so no difference there. But then the rear cameras, there is a slight difference here as well this year. So we've actually now got a 48 megapixel wide sort of sensor inside the iPhone 15. And this is the same sensor that we've got inside the likes of the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So it's exactly the same sensor. And it's also got a 12 megapixel ultra wide as well. It's really, really cool to hear. And then we've also then on the iPhone 14 only got that 12 megapixel for both the wide and ultra wide but they can both record up to 4k video but let's talk a bit more about those features what those cameras also give us so we've actually still got quad tone and then also at the same time though with the iphone 50 because of that 48 megapixel what it also does mean is that we've actually now got a two times optical zoom or sort of crops in and digital zoom can actually go up to 10 times whereas on the iphone 14 it can only go up to five times digital zoom so that's really useful now to have definitely because we've got that 48 megapixel a pixel inside the 15 so that's really helpful usual bits and pieces of night mode deep fusion and smart hdr3 is inside it and then we've still got also 30 frames per second cinematic mode as well built inside then after that we've got the selfie cameras and both of them now actually have got the 12 megapixel autofocus camera at the front which is really really useful they're both very very similar here so that's really good and it can record up to 4k and then the price Funny enough, it's actually stayed the same this year. So the iPhone 15 for the base model, what's the 128 gigabyte model, starts at 799 US dollars, just like the iPhone 14 did at 799 US dollars. So that's really good news to hear. And then the colors, we've got a new palette of different types of colors this year with the iPhone 15. We've got that new sort of, I say sort of airbrushed pink, yellow, blue, green, and black. Compared to the old traditional colors that we have with the iPhone 14, the Midnight Starlight, product red blue purple and then we also got a new yellow earlier on in 2023 but what i will say is most likely the iphone 15 probably about sort of march or april next year will also get another color added what apple would like to do 
So, what iPhone model will you be buying? And there we have it guys, that is the review comparison there. As you can see the iPhone 15 does have quite a few new upgrades inside it which actually does make it a definitely a better model than the iPhone 14. I definitely thought the iPhone 14 lacked something last year, it was very similar to the iPhone 13 and there wasn't that much point upgrading to it say if you came from an iPhone 12 or something like this. Whereas this time I would say if you're coming from an iPhone 11 or iPhone 12 it is definitely probably worth upgrading to this brand new iPhone 15 but I'd love to know your thoughts as well so put them down in the comments below and also guys it's time to wrap up this video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button also at the same time if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell until next time guys I will see you really soon take care bye bye